Welcome to the BF109K4 startup lesson. Today we will practice the start procedure for the core first. The engine start sequence is typical for most World War II era warplanes. We will operate the electrical, mechanical and fuel systems of the plane to configure the aircraft for engine start. Let's move to the circuit breaker panel on the right side of the cockpit. The circuit breaker panel is used to control various electrical functions. It consists of two rows of circuit breakers. Each circuit breaker has two buttons. The larger black button with a white dot switches the corresponding circuit on. The red button opens the circuit and switches it off. The leftmost row of buttons is used to control various internal systems. The right-hand row of buttons is used to control the radio system as well as the electrical fuel pump. Let's start by switching on the F135 circuit. It is responsible for the FUG16 radio station in order to contact ATC and request permission for startup. The frequency selector for the FUG16 ZY radio has four positions indicated by symbols. All four positions are locked to specific frequencies which are set before flight. The pilot cannot manually set frequencies beyond the four presets. The four frequencies are used for communication with increasingly larger groups of aircraft. The one position is the management frequency. It is used for communication within the flight or squadron. The two position is the group order frequency. It is used for communication between several flights from different squadrons participating in a single rate. The triangle position is the air traffic control frequency. It is used to communicate with the designated air traffic controller. The square position is the Reichweite defense frequency and it is used to coordinate countrywide air defense efforts in large scale rates. Set the frequency selector to the triangle position which is currently tuned to the Naki Kulki ATC. Adjust the FUG16 volume by rotating the knob into the center position, the second dot. The homing switch can be set to one of two positions, FTFT or YZF. This works in conjunction with the FUG16 ZY frequency selector and determines the radio's operational mode. Make sure that the homing switch is set to the FTFT position. Request startup by pressing the backslash key. Select ATC by pressing F5, then select Zenaki Koki ATC with F1 and request the startup with F3. If the radio is set correctly, you will hear the confirmation. After the startup is confirmed, close the communication menu by pressing the backslash key again. Switch on the V100 circuit. It's responsible for the MW50 system, the prop pitch automation, a landing gear indicator, compass, a REVI illumination and ignition. Good, now switch on the E101 circuit responsible for the fuel pumps. Now all circuits necessary for the startup are enabled. Set the water radiator lever to the open position to avoid potential overheating in case of a water radiator automation malfunction. Let's move to the left side of the cockpit and operate the fuel system. The BF109K4 uses a single main 400 liter L-shaped fuel tank located partly under the cockpit floor and partly behind the rear cockpit bulkhead. Two fuel pumps are provided, P1 and P2. P1 draws fuel from the rear section of the tank, while P2 draws fuel from the front of the L-shaped tank. A fuel feed selector located below the throttle quadrant is used to switch between the fuel pumps. Enable both fuel pumps by setting the selector lever to the P1 plus P2 position. It's recommended to temporarily move the throttle lever full forward to ease access to the fuel feed selector. Remember to move the throttle all the way back after you select both fuel pumps. Good, now let's proceed to the ignition selector switch. It controls the magnetos used to supply power to the engine ignition system and has four possible positions. Only the M1 plus 2 position should be used to start the engine and at all other times during normal operation. Set the ignition selector switch to the M1 plus 2 position.
Let's close the canopy to prevent any damage by propeller airflow when the engine is started. Push the throttle lever slightly forward, away from the minimum position, close to the red SU label. We are now close to starting the engine, so it's okay to raise the starter handle cover. Pump the primer pump handle for approximately 8 to 9 full strokes. When finished, secure the handle in the down position. Signal the ground crew to run the inertial starter. To do so, bring up the communications menu by pressing the backslash key. Select the ground crew with F8, issue the order to run the starter with F4 and wait for the confirmation that the starter is ready and running. It usually takes about 30 seconds. Run the starter. Copy. Use the left and right wheel brakes while you wait for the ground crew to run the starter in order to avoid moving during the startup. Clear. Hold down the brakes while you pull and hold the, hold the handle until the engine starts. Release the handle when the engine starts firing. Good start. Release the starter handle. Close the starter handle cover. Turn the governor automation switch to the lower automatic position. The water methanol injection system can add additional power to the engine and helps to avoid detonation. Enable the MW system with the MW50 power button on the main dashboard. Now set the water radiator lever to the auto position. Continue to idle the engine at 800 to 1000 RPM using your throttle axis until you are ready to taxi or perform a pre-flight check. This concludes the engine start lesson. Well done! See you in the next lesson explaining taxi and takeoff procedures.